Hey everyone, today we're doing something different. I am gonna show you how to play a card game called Swoop, and I'm betting that you have never heard of it. Uh, and if you have, let me know down in the comments because I searched the internet and couldn't find a single thing about it. Anyway, uh, I'm showing you this card game today because I just learned how to play and I really enjoyed it. And I think it's a great way to get together with some family and friends and just spend some time having some fun. And of course, you're gonna need some food to go with that. And of course, I've got you covered with lots of appetizers and uh, dessert recipes on my channel that you can use. This is a fun card game, pretty easy to play, just a few rules and things, but once you see it, you'll get it. It's pretty simple. I'm actually gonna show you, you know, explain it to you a little bit and then actually deal out some cards so you can actually see how it works uh, in action. Let's get started and go over those uh, instructions and I'll show you how to play the game. So the object of the game is to go out by getting rid of all of your cards. Now, all of the cards are worth a certain number of points, and so if you have cards left in your hand when someone goes out, those points are gonna count against you. So what we tend to do is we like to play, we'll say, well, we'll play to 500 points. And then, you know, whoever gets there first ends the game, and then the low score wins the game. Now, we're gonna need three decks of cards, including the jokers. You wanna keep those in there. Now, you'll notice here that I have three decks, and they're of different colors. That just makes it easier for me at the end of the game when we want to put the cards away. It's easier to sort them by color instead of having to go through and you know match up all the suits. So if you have that, it works great, but you can play with you know three decks of cards that are all the same color if, you, if that's all you have. Now here's how the scoring works. Aces are worth one point, face cards are worth 10 points, and then all the other cards are you know, the value that they are, okay? So a nine is worth nine points, etc. Now the tens and the jokers are worth 50 points, and they're also called swoop cards, and we'll explain that a little bit more a little bit later. So along with your three decks of cards, you'll also want to have a piece of paper and somebody will be the scorekeeper. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll take our three decks of cards and we're gonna just mix them all together. And what we do is we just throw them on the table and everybody helps to kind of mix them up like this, okay? And we want to keep them all face down. So once we have all the cards mixed up on the table, each player will draw out 19 cards and keep them face down so you can't see them, okay? And so you're going to count out, like I said, each player is going to take out 19 cards. Once all the players have their 19 cards, have everybody go through and just pick a card to see who goes first. High card goes first. So I picked a 10, a swoop card. That person got a two, and that person got a three. So I get to go first, I get to start the game. So we'll take all these cards and we are gonna just push them aside on the side of the table. They are no longer in play. All right, so now each player takes their, their little pack of cards and they place four of them face down. Then you're gonna place a card on top of each pile, face up. So now you wanna take the rest of your cards and place them in numerical order. So you can see here I've got the swoop cards, the two tens and the joker over here. And then I got couple of kings and then I'll put my queen and my jack. You know, you get the idea. I got a couple of nines there. Let's see. I think that's pretty good. And then we're ready to play. And so since I'm the first person to play, I'm going to want to play a high card. So my options here, I would probably play these two kings and I would take them and say two kings and place them out on the table. All right, so I played two kings, right? Player number two is now gonna play their hand and they need to play either a king or several kings. You can play you know, as many kings as you have. That would be a good thing to get rid of as more, the most you can. And that would be a, called a swoop. So if you play any four or more of a card, that's called a swoop, that's a good thing. The cards will then be pushed out of play, okay? And then that player, that same player gets to start a new set, okay, they can play whatever they want from their hand. And then the next turn after that, we'll then have to play either at it or below it. 
let's say they played two nines, all right? Then the next player would have to play some more nines, maybe make a swoop out of it to get rid of it, or they play under it. If you can't play under it, then you have to play whatever you have, and then that means that you have to take the pile and put it in your hand. So I'm going to go through a few rounds of the of hands here so you can see how the game is played and some strategies, but I'm not going to play the whole game because it'll take too long. Okay, so let's just follow the play here. I've got my two kings that the player number one played, that's me, <laughs> and this is what we have in our hand. Now you also want to take into account these cards up here as well. Now they're all pretty low, and the highest card that I have I don't have any kings or queens or anything like that, is nine, okay? So I have two nines, so I would play two nines, and I would call, oh wait, I have three nines. I would call out three nines, and then it would be player number three's turn. So let's go over there. Now let's look at player number three's hand. I've already got them all lined up here. Ooh. Okay, so you can see here that player number three has a bunch of kings and queens, right? But we can't play those because we have to play under the nines. Now, if we had one nine, that would be great because then we could call that a swoop because then there would be four nines and we could swoop it away and then start over. But we don't have that. So we simply here in this case, well, you could play your swoop card, the 10 right here. You could play that. That's an option. But I think I would hang on to it for a while. There's some strategy here. I would probably go with my next highest card. You see the five here? And you see the five down here. So that's two fives. So I would play two fives. Now let's look at player number one's cards. All right, so what's played late last was two fives. I only have one five here, so that's an option. I also have a lot of swoop cards. I've got uh, three swoop cards in my hand, and I've got one up here. You don't want to get stuck with those. If somebody else goes out, then you're stuck with, these are worth 50 points each. So that's not a good thing. But we're still early in the game. So what to do, what to do? I might play, I think in this case, I'm going to just, you know, just for the heck of it, I'm going to play my swoop card, but I'm going to play this swoop card so that I can start working on these piles. So I'm going to play this swoop card just to show you. I play swoop and the cards go away. They are no longer in play. You just say swoop and they're gone. Now, since I swooped it, now I get to play a card. Okay, so what would I play? I could play this because these are unknowns. And if you get stuck with these, sometimes that can be not a good thing. So just for the heck of it, I'm going to play it. It's an eight. Now, if I have any other eights in my hand, I can add that to it and say two eights or three eights, but I don't. So I'm going to play one eight. Here is player two's hand, and he has one eight. So I'm going to play that. And I'll say two eights, because now there's two eights up there. Now, player number three is going to look for some eights to see if maybe they can swoop it. If he, gets, if he has two eights, then he could swoop it. What do you think player three is going to do here? We've got two eights up there. We have one swoop card here. We have one card that we could play, but it wouldn't be a good time to play it because you don't know if it's higher than an eight, then you have to take the eights. So that's a gamble. So I would play under the eight, and I would take the fours. And look at I can play three. I can get rid of three fours. So that's what you call out. Three fours. Now it goes back to player one. So player one has three fours facing him. So he has to play another four or more, or he has to play under it or play a swoop card. Uh, I think that what I'll do on this particular occasion is I'm going to play one, two. And the reason for that is I just, I have a lot of swoop cards yet and I want to hang on to them because everybody has a lot of cards and I just want to expose some of those cards that are uh, hidden. Here's player two's options. He's got one two facing him. So I would play two more twos, that's three twos. So with three twos facing player three, his best option is to play his one, two, which will make four twos, right, up here, and that is a swoop. So now he gets rid of all those cards to the discard pile. They're out of play, and now he can play whatever he wants. 
Now, I would get rid of the two kings. Okay, so player one now has two kings facing him, has lots of options. Now, could play this card here, not knowing what it is, because chances are, well, it's going to be like a freebie, right? Because you're going to play under it no matter what, or equal to it. So I think that's the best move in this case. Ooh, it's a swoop card. Look at that. That means this pile goes away, and it's still player number one's turn. That being the case, I would take a queen and play the next highest card. One queen. Player two has some options. Player two here can play, what's his next highest card? A seven. You could play a seven, you could play a couple sixes, or you could play one of these because it's a queen. It's kind of high. Chances are better that you, you'll be able to play under it. I'm going to go ahead and, and take that chance. It's a six. Okay, if you have any other sixes, and we do, we can play those as well. So there's three sixes. Keep in mind that you always want to keep track of the other cards that the players have, how many they have. You know, at the top, this player here, it doesn't have too many. Their cards are a little bit lower. Um, just keep that in mind. So for player number three, there's two sixes presented to them. I would probably take the two threes and play that. We'll play under that. So I hope that going through a game for you and showing you how it's played and maybe just some ideas on strategy of when to play certain cards helps you out, helps you to understand how to play the game better. I'm also going to include uh, some written instructions in the description of the video. Click down there. You could copy and paste it, print it out, and then that way it would, it would be a guide for you. But it's pretty simple. Once you start playing and getting the hang of it, it really comes together pretty, pretty easily. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you try this. It's a lot of fun. Get together with family and friends and just have some real good quality time. Uh, enjoy playing a game and you know having some food, make some of my appetizers and desserts, and you'll have a great time. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.